All right. I'm putting forth the concept that whoever's around to, you know, officially get a new Nintendo console going, um, we really need it to be, you know, obviously a laser projector right onto your wall, you know, because that's just the most convenient. The technology's there for it, where you can just... The laser saves so much effort on trying to make expensive processing that's above and beyond the pale. Because, like, you really could go old school with this. You know how, like, 8-bit games, 16-bit games, they actually secretly, this is something you don't know, they're actually programming it like how jewelers did long, long ago. Like, right into the chips on the circuits often. How So the layout of the games is the layout of the actual circuits and the chips and those big-ass, you know, insert ROMs that go into the top of old consoles and stuff. So it's insanely high power in one way to, like, block radiation while, of course, being insanely basic in most other ways. So that's what the concept for this new era of radiation, you know, people might be going through still somewhat, cleaning up the planet from different substances. So, like... Um, it needs to be laser projection right off of the disc, you know? It needs to take that concept of quadrants, but actually have all the data on the disc um, that can be bounced. See, this gets into the concept that the disc would be read in different wavelengths, different levels, for example. And those different level sandwiches of the disc would be different levels of the game environment. So the, usually the whole disc, I'm just trying to think this through practically in the moment, uh, layer is then read by the lasers and different colors can then be projected. So it's like always projecting the particles that make up the landscape of that level, which can be quite large on that level of disc. Think like, you know, Mario Nintendo 64, the uh, battle course where there's the multiple levels and you can fall down into the middle of either down and then the green shells bounce all over and you get trapped down there and raped <laughs> by green shells. Um, well, it's like that with the disc because that's how it was with that cartridge. It actually had those layers of a chip to make that level, you know? So that's what I'm, I'm saying can be artificed with, you know, all the different colored mosses and stuff. And then you have the lasers, instead of, you know, they're coming out at, not at the audience, but at the wall, so that then it doesn't overwhelm people's eyes, you know, like it would on a screen, you know, that level of moss light coming off of a disc. Yeah, and it's just the same base concept. Oh, just a second. Uh, stop. It's acting nuts. All right, what was that? Okay. Just a second, I'll stop. It's the same base concept I said with the Blu-ray player. I was thinking about it when I came up with the Blu-ray player concept where I said it projects, you know, off of the disc and reads it up into the reader yeah. for better efficiency. I said, well, when it bounces off of the Blu-ray, for example, I mean, this would make just a blue game, and this wouldn't be very good. That's why we're yeah. <laughs> we need the different color mosses that were describing yeah. uh, some various documentation and things in about 2008. There's, uh, I honestly think it really is the volcanic moss from any hot springs that are around in the yeah. Northwest. Like, we, even we go to one where there's orange moss, there's, like, green moss, and uh, yeah. you know, not in where we are. It's in colder lakes and things with blue moss. And these different mosses are highly light reactive, and so they don't decay over time because they like stay in the disc in the corner. Well, it's because if you 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 into okay, you integrate them with crystals of different types that are embedded. So then the moss grows into those, and then go into a dormant state like moss does, that intensify the crystals into the shapes that are the game environment or the movie. You know. So what I'm saying is. The discs are like a film reel. You know what I'm saying? Now, what I was assuming is the cheapest, because it's always this way with the industry, way to do this wouldn't even be to harvest, you know, like quartz or something or some other crystal. It would be simply to get the crystals from uh, weed, cannabis, marijuana, especially yeah. the ones with the highest levels of crystalline, you know, you know, trichominess. 
and those crystals would probably be the easiest substrate for the moss to grow through when slightly yeah. concentrated into a form that they can grow into. Think um, uh, select uh, or whatever it's called. Yeah, the select brand, but what is it called? Uh, THC or CBD. Yeah. Or what those are those concentrates. Either you can get different colored concentrates from weed, yeah. Yeah, so those already exist, and this might all just come together perfectly, really easily into a disc, I'm assuming. That's superior yeah. to what they were talking about in 2008. I mean, I have all these concepts like, for example, squishy disc technology, where it's like a, a la layer of, like, you know, gel, like, uh orange, whatever other substances in there, concentrates, because they can all rainbow light magnificently, and the gel could be red, you know, in different layers for 3D and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. You could probably make, because there's different substrates like we know out of weed, I mean, you could use any different substrate you wanted. Yeah. You could use uh, polysaccharides from monk fruit for the gel if you wanted, and then use the the weed as the crystals that would grow the the yeah um, the moss on the dish. yeah. Uh, or you could, for example, just yeah. use weed if you wanted to, and to, well, to it depends upon the flavor. project, what people can handle, what people have eaten. Like, I'm sorry, but if you're being filmed on a camera, that's going onto a disc directly that like it's like a laser lens that's picking you up and all those colors are hitting you from those different mosses and stuff if you haven't had a diet with healthy mosses of different colors and weed of different colors and stuff you're going to be overwhelmed and have all kinds of you know brain problems so that you can't act very good yeah so i mean i could come up with a diet regimen for this too for example here's what you do you consume uh, that, that Irish moss, yeah. so you can see the reds, and then they could put that into a disc, then there'd be some common hot spring moss that's, like, green from all the, the hot spring areas, and that could be, like, powdered, and that's, that's healthy, it's not yeah. healthy, and so you could get some green, so you already have red and green. Well, you might as well put these in those energy squares that, you know, you eat to before soccer games or after, or whatever. Yeah, with, like, nuts and chocolate. Yeah. You know? Because, um... I mean, to see the Nintendo titles, you might have to go to a Nintendo theme park yeah. and eat those things just to be ready for the titles at this point if, if we're, we're yeah. going to have a codependent system of diet to even see the system's graphics. <laughs> exactly. Because otherwise, it'll just look like, you know, your eyes are so weak, it'll just look like a blur of sort of light color, and you can't really focus and make it out very good because you've got weak eyes. Yes, yeah, so you have to have the biota of what the disc is made out of. That's why we go yeah. healthy, healthy, healthy with all products, with all materials. Yeah. Now, most people smoke weed, and I'm pushing for weed to be a great material because it works well with my uh, horrible inflammation from athletic, you know, performance. Like, I get that really bad. Yeah. Coconut oil doesn't get me there, you know? Yeah. So, uh, because of that, it just encourages, like, I guess with all the, you know, wireless motion controlled games, the concept that I'm trying to be like, if I was pushing for my Nintendo, imagine Wii Sports, but I just want more. I want balance boards. I want more engagement. I'm that guy. Yeah. I want 3D and active environments you can see yourself in on the TV. Yeah. Whereas Ammon, you know, he's willing to compromise a little bit more, and he, he, he'll he say, yeah, you should go to a theme park and, uh, you know, consume things. And I know I said that too, but, like, I'd rather just have you consume massive amounts of weed of different types so you can yeah. see those colors, and then that would be what the disc is made out of because it's already what your cars are made out of. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, you know, grew up, in a very um, heated debate over sexuality extremes in my larger extended life of my community and family. So because of that, I always am pushing sexuality. And so, you know, of course I'm, I'm proposing Nintendo is very sexual. It always was. And they've always been cutting the sex out of the games and uh, the movies, even in connection with Marvel, are going to be very sexual. And it's going to be so tied into the plot that the whole movie's just going to be... I'm going to be talking about that very soon to get people excited for hopefully a Nintendo console and good quality games like we just saw here today 
uh, what was the the pre-build of the new Nintendo game? Uh, SpongeBob Cosmic Shake. Oh well, that's well. Look, this is a funny one. Like they took it. They took the engine from like Super Mario Galaxy with like lighting upgrades or whatever. And look, he's a Luma. Yeah, Patrick's yeah, it's a Luma. real weird. He's got a little balloon supposed leg tie off, I guess, but he's like a Luma basically. Yeah. But this isn't even what I was talking about. I was talking about the other thing, too, that's supposedly fan-made, the uh, other video, but whatever. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you have it open? I don't think you do anymore, maybe. I don't think I do. Oh, okay, whatever. Well, uh, I'll have to show that off later. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Here, let me, let me switch to the camera a second. Boom, here it is. Super Mario Gravity. Yep, see that? Bloom, it's 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 definitely a work in progress. But it's pretty cute. Shows off different types of cool stuff. I love uh Yas. Oh, like yeah, we if we could have like three D projected Mario games on our walls for this type of stuff with like enhanced motion controls, it'd be so awesome. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You just project it right off of the disc and up onto the wall. Yeah. And I'm just pushing that everything, because I have a textiles issue. See, this is my problem. I have a textiles issue where nobody wants to have anything be available. Every material is expensive, so yeah. I'm just pushing for you can grow a bunch of weed, you can produce it into everything. It's already the best yeah. form of most polymer coatings and most polymers in general. <laughs> And I'm sick of polyacrylic, so it just needs to be grown everywhere for every purpose because I'm sick of not having a unified system of easy to use yeah. products in any way that have that don't just snap like they're made of plastic. Well, that's why I'm trying to smoke every type of weed, including the ones that taste like they're for like polishing, you know, marble floors, or I mean, like coating them. We had that one recently. <sighs> So many different varieties of weird weed, man. There's always something new. Ugh. So, yeah. um, Yeah, whatever. It, yeah, weed polymer, weed crystals mixed with other gels, mixed with other, you know, mixed with mosses that activate and eat stuff and make out of the shapes of stuff so they can be beautifully preserved in different discs and films and different stuff. It's, it's the way to go. It's what everybody's always been talking about. Yeah, like, I actually do agree that, you know, we don't want to take two steps forward and two steps back, so there's no point in digital without that film-like aspect. Yeah. And so this very camera that we're recording this on, it has, I don't quite know how it works, but it's got some uh, film-like qualities in a certain way. Yeah, I'd have to talk to the engineer. Yeah. I don't know. But we did talk, we did whine about how we wanted a feeling to a camera like this, you know, and it fulfills it. It has digital feel, like our stuff at night for Star Wars and everything. So if, if any digi, DJI technology can be utilized somehow for making a Nintendo console, I don't care, you know. We need, we need to get this to be creative. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be awesome because yeah. I'm bored. Well, yeah, exactly. So we'll think about it. Everybody think it hard, really hard. Come on now. Think about the type of concepts you want Mario to have, you know? Yeah. Um, so I thought of a solution for everybody consuming way too many different types of polymer that I assume are meant, you know, for products that are physical that you're supposed to, you know, use as like computers and things. Uh, and instead they're putting it in like cheesecake factory cheesecakes and stuff, I assume, because it's like that type of ingredients. It's industrial. So if they're going to keep eating all types of polymer, let's go into other categories of polysaccharides. Take orange, lime, and lemon uh, peels, which can t probably contain a large amount of polysaccharides because they're very plasticky. And uh, make products out of those and see if the motherfuckers turn those into hamburger buns. You know what I mean? What, are you going to steal the mix and, and uh, melt your organs? Come on now.